I go to SUNY New Paltz here. I um, am a photography major. I have some photographs here. Um, this is my photo streamlined. I also do I also do um, mixed media sculptures. I have two here. They're, I call them body illuminations. And um, this here is um, one of my body illuminations. Um, I do them off of feelings as I like to show um, like your inner aura and what you're feeling on the inside and like how you can portray what's what you're feeling and and how you can like show other people what's on the inside um, I I'm a sophomore here at SUNY New Paltz and um, I hope to pursue my career in art and uh, keep going and see where I go with the rest of this this is my second body illumination um, this one has more of a ocean beach theme to it. This one really like glistens and um, I'm really in love with this one. I'm gonna <laughs> feel pretty detached if it sells. Um, it has, this is more serene and when I look at it I feel much calm and beauty and it just shows like your true inner self I feel like. It's, it's just one of my favorite pieces I've done so far. Sure, this is uh, Richard Iani's work. It's uh, the praying mantis for uh, an extreme hunter might enjoy this as a trophy, but he makes most of his work out of found artifacts. So, oh, I'm sorry, he makes most of his work out of found artifacts. So the antler, the uh, antennas are made from straws, and the eyes from uh, Christmas balls. So. It's a lot of reused materials and a technique that was really originated out of paper mache but evolved into the use of uh, epoxies and, um, uh, and uh, taping and cloth and uh, mixed media. So we incorporate all kinds of mediums. So here you have a friendly jar man made out of bottle caps and uh, paper clothes pins and washers and all kinds of little things and he's got a lot of character and ready for the holidays again Richard Iani's work this is one of Richard Iani's more uh, friendly creatures from his very active imagination made out of a vitamin bottle and some uh, discarded materials rubber hose and coat hangers ready for the holidays that's ceramic? It is, it's not. It is plastic. It's actually a vitamin bottle. So if you opened it up, 
It's actually a container for you to put your dreams in in case you forget about them. What do you put in there? Your dreams. Your dreams. Right? Yes, you can put your dreams or some backup marbles. <laughs> Either one would work. Uh, I have. I have some interesting dreams. Oh yeah, yeah. Now these are are rocks and fish uh, from Montauk. The rocks originated glacial stone and beautiful tumbled stones by the water, and um, they've been turned into fish by adding polymers, epoxy polymers, and glass eyes. And they're now waterproof, and they're... So here we have a stone, a stone that has now become a sea turtle, and a symbol of our quest to protect the water and our earth. So these are the Peace on Earth turtles, made by Richard Iani. It is an actual stone, yes. And here you can, in this case, you can see the stones. These are from, from Montauk, and you can still see the stone before they were drawn on with colored pencils. So these are lovers. And just to remind us that we live on a planet with many sentient creatures that deserve our respect. and. Uh, we need to not pollute our waters. So we're working hard on that issue. And we communicate it through, our, through the art. This is another wild fish. I think he came from Africa or something. But he's, he's full of it, this one. But you can see the stone there as well, still showing through. Is that polymer? It is. This is the epoxy polymer here and the, the fin as well, and then the eyes are attached with that. But the basic shape is, is the rock. This is a very interesting piece. Uh, Richard works in a textile industry at this point. Um, so this, some of the remnants are the cloth that is actually drawn on in this case. And the boards that are discarded on the pallets were used as the backing belt buckles that were discarded as well, uh, frame it in. And so again, another piece made from all discarded materials uh, joins the ranks of the unframed here. An another wonderful creation by an unframed artist, Richard Iani. The belt, where, where does he get the belt buckles? The belt buckles, uh, it's a very interesting story. When we purchased our property upstate, the owner of the junkyard's son, uh, had been hunting our land forever and ended up being a very close friend who we kept out of trouble for many years. And as a result, uh, Richard got the keys to the junkyard and was able to uh, collect anything that they found for him. And after a while, the owner knew what he liked and he likes repetitive forms. And in this case, uh, we ended up with boxfuls of discarded belt buckles from an industry that had gone under. So. Do you have a website where you sell these things? Uh, yes, um, actually, Unframed Artist Gallery right here. Michelle and I are co-founders of this. What's the website? Uh, www Unframed Artist Gallery. That's artists plural. Gallery dot com. Artists what? Plural with an S. So it's artists because we're a co-op gallery. So there's many of us involved. Here's Francis, one of our chief our chief uh, organizers here francis's son is an, a wonderful artist as well paul sandiford and I, I like the party, and that's all so as i said we hope to uh i just came now to see the show and uh see what's happening <laughs> basha actually he was getting you when you bent my, over that's my shot bent over <laughs> <laughs> the uh, woman sitting behind the desk here is Basha Mariansky. She is a curator for international shows at the Chelsea Gallery down in Manhattan and is a, a wonderful one of, a member of our Unframed Artist Gallery with several paintings here at this exhibit. Uh, expert in watercolors and has uh, really worked hard at uniting people all over the world. Uh, through the arts. Canto is the uh, featured artist for Unframed Artists on the, uh, in the local paper. Her beautiful piece was just uh, this week. 
in the New Paltz Paltz Times, looks in like. In the New Paltz yeah. Times. So I just maybe you can in. tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I just walked in and found out about that, which is quite lovely. Um, this is the goddess Sekhmet, who is an ancient Egyptian goddess and has some wild stories about pomegranate juice and mistaking that for blood. And, um, and it's the honoring the feminine divine, definitely, which is part of my mission as an artist. Um, I also have more ethereal images, like the fairy unicorn here, which is um, this horse was my soulmate for 18 years <laughs> and passed about two years ago, and I miss her terribly. She was definitely one of the closest beings in my life. And um, this is the goddess Tara. This is part of my goddess project. I think I've painted over 50, 60 um, goddess paintings right now. Uh, some of them have been in calendars. They're in a goddess oracle deck, things like that. When I was a teenager, I was looking around for images of women with in power, women who are empowered. And um, I couldn't find very many images like that in the 60s and 70s. So I, I decided I wanted to make those images. And I started, I started, I think, when I was in seventh grade. <laughs> because I was very interested in mythology. I was very interested in the women in mythology. Um, some of these have a little airbrush on it. I don't do airbrush anymore. I mostly do pastel, uh, watercolor and pastel. And at one point, um, my boyfriend at the time was showing me how to, how to work with airbrush, but it's too fussy for me. I'd rather use more organic pigments, like the pastel powder, which is what I brush on the paintings. <laughs> and, it, and it's really, yeah, these handmade pigments and just sort of like scrape it and move it with a brush and then fix it where I want it and then maybe layer it. So that's something I love to do. And I also love working with water, so watercolor is one of my main mediums. We've all been defending the waters here with the hydrofracking. And so it's nice to have another sister on board with you. Oh, we have yes. a lot of common territory. Yeah. It's great to have you. Yeah, thank you. I enjoyed putting your work to your, your, your painting and we'll interview. It's called the patio table. I looked down on the patio table and there were a lot of different objects. I added the plants. I added, of course, the, uh, the lemon, the sunglasses. And I painted this, uh, what they call plein air, but not in one session. It took a while. I had to have the same lighting every day. So it is definitely not a studio painting. It was right there on the spot. And I wanted, I like to work large because it has more breadth. Um, and I found that the composition almost arranged itself because of the round table. And it is called Patio Table. Although it is now called Who? Because this show is Miracle and Mystery. So we changed the title. But who lives there? That's the question. Who belongs to the sunglasses? It's a mystery. It's a mystery, yes. And I enjoyed doing this so much, and I think this show right here at the Unframe is so varied and so marvelous. There's so many talented people. I'm thrilled to be here. And we're, we're thrilled to have a look. Well, we Thank you. One of Thank our you. dearest uh, foundation stones for the gallery. Thank you. That's true. I, I was here in the beginning. Yeah, go and look at it, and, then, and I'll. Yeah. Okay. Lucy, can I interview you next? Can we interview you next? And Howard? What should we do, Howard? I'd rather get you than make him jealous. <laughs> no, we, we could interview Howard if you want to. This is one of our favorite art artists oh. here, Basha. Marianska. Marianska. And this is one of her beautiful pieces. 
Oh, fairies in my backyard. And Vasa, fairies. go ahead and explain your work. Okay, this is uh, expressing the happiness of meeting the fairies in my, at my backyard. And uh, they are dancing here, and they are actually good spirits, and they match the title of this show today. This is magic, but also real. I mean, it depends how you see it. And it's all about feelings, as art is all about feelings. So about me, I'm from Poland originally. I was born in Gdańsk and educated there at the Academy of Fine Arts when I got my master's degree. And then after this, I went to Paris to have another degree in, um, you know, Renaissance art that they call the Louvre. And then I came here to the States and I am uh, artist for, I don't know, 30 years at least. And uh, I show my art all over the world and also in Europe. I am represented in Europe by the Nice Gallery in Warsaw. So I show in France, in Germany, in Italy, in Spain, in, in Africa, actually everywhere, whatever. Also, oh, over there. Uh, well, also I, uh, I'm a curator of the international shows in Manhattan. I have been working for seven years there, promoting wonderful artists from all around the world. And uh, I also show there all the time. So the gallery is in Chelsea, 530 West 25th Street. The name of the gallery is New Century Artist Gallery. Everybody is invited to see the shows. This is titled, The Wall is Watching You. And you can feel being watched sometimes, and you don't know where does it come from. So that's how you feel. And uh, somebody who is watching me, uh, us, I felt was a female, so that's why I put her, I put her, you know, dressed, but she's coming out of the wall, and that's how I proceed this, you know, that's my imagination. That's a beautiful oh, piece. Thank you I so much. It. It thank you so much. This piece worked very beautifully with uh, one of our other international artists, uh, Amal. Uh, as Al Mazir, Al Mazir. Oh, yes. and she's not here today. She should be, um, also but, woman. Yes, the sound but she, she was, yes. And I'm trying to get her to my shows, to my gallery, and I hope that one day when she's not so under so many things, she will come and show with us because my shows are only by invitations. We don't do call to artist things. Yes, yeah, so we're trying to unite the world in our own way through the arts here. And if not in Manhattan, right? And here for sure. We're always here. This we're regular. Basha's a regular here, as is Amal. My name is Lucy Miller. I'm uh, I'm uh, showing a piece here at the Unframed Gallery, and it's right here on the wall. What are you trying to show? It's a it's a small color pencil uh, painting of a I, I named it Gentle Stream because it's kind of like a peaceful place where you can just go and, and sit and relax and uh, meditate. And it was a big painting in my uh, dentist's office. And I just kind of, you know, just uh, decided to, to have it in my life. So that's what happened. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of the show? I think it's a great show. A lot of people turned out here. 
As you can see, <laughs> there's a lot of people. Where's Howard here? Where's his drawing? It's right there. He has several pieces. <laughs> this is called uh, Red Sky. It's very nice. One of my favorites. Hello. Yeah. What could what could I help you with? What would you like to know? Uh, would you like to explain any of the paintings? Well, you wanted comments on the inmates' art over there. Is that right? Yeah. Come on, this school. Can you make it over there? Daisy, come on over. What's that? Yeah, okay, we all worked on it. I don't know exactly. Uh, there's a certain element of insanity in it, I think. It's sort of... Uh, apparently he is. I'm not sure what prison he's in. But um, these are apparently letters that he has sent to um, uh, someone. And see, it's very... Uh, this guy's in prison? Yeah, this man is apparently. How is he keeping busy? Well, it is, and it's very carefully done, if you notice. Very. It's done on envelopes. It's done on envelopes. Well, because he apparently he wanted to convey this to the person that he's sending it to. And it's... Um, I, I, I think it has an element of kind of insanity to it, too. It's a, like a, a sort of a unrealistic quality about it. Sort of an escapist art. Escapist art, yes, that's right. Escapist art, yeah. But he's... Um, how long is he in for? I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know that much about him. Daisy? What's the name of the person who did that? Well, let's see. Elijah, I don't see the name really. I'm not familiar with, with uh, I don't know of a name. This is the one I like. I think that's totally wild and totally interesting. Yeah. My son has a couple over in the corner, which are very... All right, yes, I like this. I think this is... Um, it's... Uh, Sorry. Hey, Brian. I'm sure you'll edit That's an interesting one. I don't know. I'd like to say you heard the title. It's probably not. What part of Brooklyn, He's New York. He's New York. Mix the animal and the human beings, you know. They're, uh, they're human bodies with the animal heads. and It's, um, it's a fascinating little piece. I'm going to go see what? Okay, these are my son's two little paintings, little wild paintings for the Christmas and the um, lady with the cat. And um, that's your son. That's my son. Yeah. How old? How old is he? He's uh, thirty. I forget how old. Late thirties. I forget. I forget at the moment. But at any rate. He has his own, he has his own style, the Christmas and the other. And these are, um,
everybody will write down here in the paper right. whatever you want to get rid of. Never come back again this next year and put it all in the fire. All right. So yes. Hello, my name is Martin Davis, and I work exclusively or almost exclusively in oils, and this is a piece I've just submitted to the show. Yes, well, um, I had difficulty controlling bright colors, so recently I started working in grays, and um, I did, uh, mainly I started doing that by buying some raw sienna, and I mixed my magenta and cobalt blue and raw sienna, and so I can get a full range of color. Is that, is that pastel or oil? It's oil paints. Edward Davis. Yes. Are you the retired wizard, or is that the name of the well, I didn't intend for it to look so much like me as it does, but I guess that was a subconscious thing that happened, and I had to submit something, so I submitted this as is. Do you have anything else there? I don't, not today. Any other paintings you'd like to comment on? Anything you impress uh, by? So there's a number of paintings here today I'm impressed by. Um, It's really, there's just so many here that are so good that I don't want to single anything out. Okay, anything else you'd like to say, Martin? Um, Merry Christmas. Okay, thank you. They're going somewhere, I don't know where they're going. Howard Miller. There isn't much explanation to this painting. It explains itself. It's just, uh, it's uh, hot. It's hot and alive. Like yourself. Yeah, hot and alive. That's about it. Is that a ball there? An orange or what? Yeah, it's a ball and something rolling down the. It's just a shape actually to break up the other shapes, you know, sort of. It needed a roundness to break up the pointed trees and the flatness of the ground. I can get untangled here. You want to go before me? That's fine. <laughs> well, thank you. Okay, let me see. I was recording all the time there. Okay, hi, my name is Dave Clark, and I'm new to the Unframed Artist Gallery. Um, this is one of my paintings that's called Kaput Mortem, and it's actually based on a movie uh, called Ultraviolet by an actress uh, by the name of Mila Jovovich. And the story of this is that she is actually protecting a child who has the, the genes to protect or uh, get rid of this virus that is plaguing the earth in the future and so she is storming this facility so she can save this child. What media did you work in? Uh, this is actually uh, an oil mixed media so what I do is I actually do reference photography from the movies and then I will print it out as a uh, large format jacle in black and white and then I repaint the whole thing in oils. Yep, and uh, I'm from uh, Southbury, Connecticut, and I've been uh, an artist now uh, probably for about 30 years. I was trained in uh, commercial art and illustration, 
and uh, now I'm taking lessons with a, an impressionist, and this is pretty much some of the photoristic, photorealistic nature of the way I'm painting. I'm trying to get out of that a bit and be a little more expressionistic in my painting style and stop being so much of an illustrator, but it's a hard habit to break. <laughs> Hi, my name is Johanna Schwarzbeck. I'm a painter and I like to introduce my painting which is called The Magical Tree. I submitted three paintings to this show at the Unframed Gallery. Um, I also have uh, Krishna's eyes are watching and the magical horse and this one uh, I think is a very nice one. I get a lot of compliments for it. It's a tree that when you step back, it's inspired by an Indian painting that I saw somewhere in a catalog and I used the inspiration to create a life tree that later I discovered myself when I step back and look at it, it has two faces that one looks in one direction and one in the other. And my inter interpretation of it is that it is the lovers that are parting. And it actually does ring true for me in my own life, that I have parted from a long-time lover and friend and uh, life companion. And I, uh, I guess that's what came out of it going in different directions but still being totally entwined and combined and together and uh, loving and caring for each other and so the tree actually that is a tree is infiltrated by other trees rivers meadows and uh, foliage that is going all over the place so anyway uh, Hi, my name is Myra. I live in Newports. I'm a resident. I'm presently at an art show. I'm asked to, I'm asked, what do I think of the show? Well, it's not so much that I think, like I'm in the thought process, but in my feeling process, I feel that everyone has something very special to offer here, and especially the merriment. And as uh, the person interviewing me right now and allowing me, so to speak, to use his device to talk into, I've seen him with his brother, and to me that is art. I've seen his brother hold his shoulder and, his, uh, and walk him when he was incapacitated you know, due to a due to a due to probably some kind of malady that you know comes with aging but it was just wonderful in the culture to see something so exceptional like that and so that's art to me and i feel like everybody who's generating their art pieces are definitely coming from a space that's not destructive because there's um they have a focus that alleviates their ego and gets them into some real earnest pursuit. So that's how I feel about, for now, for art. There's so many things I can say about art. But thank you very much for this opportunity. She wants to bring that one over here. Where is it? Hi, my name is Ruth, Ruth Pine. Um, this is my piece, Magical Mystical Gypsy. I'm here at Unframed Artist Gallery. This is my third showing here, and I really like gypsies. I think that they're very magical, mystical people. Um, it took me quite a few hours to do this over an extended period of time, mostly cut up from different magazines and papers, photocopies, some paint, some sparkles. What is it, what is it, is it supposed to show? 
Well, I've always been fascinated by the life of gypsies. Uh, I created this piece before the uh, magical, mystical theme, and it just seemed to me that it fit the theme. It's not showing anything except for what the viewer wants to see in it. I think gypsies uh, can live a nomadic life, and although the life of gypsies certainly is not now what it used to be, I think there's many different uh, cultures that have a gypsy personality, and I've always felt a kinship with that. And I'd like to really give unframed artists the crown of a good name. We have such beautiful artists here and such beautiful art. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.